Now, you know, it's, it's December the 23rd, and at this, you know, during this holiday season, you know, we got so many things going on and so much hustle and bustle and, you know, as we're doing our shopping and, you know, preparing to, you know, for this Christmas, uh, the Christmas time that we celebrate, you know, it's so easy to get lost in, in the mundaneness of, you know, the holiday thing going on. You know, you, you do your shopping nowadays, you know, they say happy holidays. They don't say Merry Christmas. And you know, I kind of checked a couple of folks on that. I said, well, I said, y'all don't say Merry Christmas anymore? They said, well, we don't want to offend anyone. I said, well, I said, that's, I said, is that your company policy? You know, because a lot of times, you know, we need to, you know, patronize those companies that say Merry Christmas, you know. And I pointed out, I said, well, look, I said, if you want to, some people will not sh patronize your store if you do not acknowledge the reason for this season. And the reason for this season is who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Say it like you know it. Jesus. Amen. The reason for the season is Jesus. Amen. You know, a lot of other things that people try to acknowledge and say, well, happy Hanukkah, you know, and happy Kwanzaa, you know, like, okay. But uh, we celebrate Jesus. He's our Lord. He is the door. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Amen. So we, uh, let's see, I, I need to check real quick before we get into the message. Are, are we having, uh, are the children going to be in here with us today? Ah, uh, yes. So we're going to take this time and dismiss uh, our children's youth. All the children. Amen. We're going to release them. We're not going to dismiss them. We're going to release them. We want to, you know, the political correctness of dismissing them, you know. We're going to release them like, ah, oh, prison, yes! <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. Well, if you have your Bibles, glory to God, if you have your Bibles, I want you to hold them up in the air. We're going to make the devil mad. Anytime we, anytime we get ready to get in this word, man, the devil gets nervous. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got your Bibles? Let's wave them. Let's wave them and let the devil know. We are getting ready to partake in God's word. You know, it's a lot of churches where, you know, they don't, they don't care if you bring your Bible or not. Because they're not teaching out of that no way. But at Faith and Victory, we teach out of this Bible. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, turn to Luke 4 and 18. We're going to start there. Um, this is not my, it's not my topic. But you know, the Lord uh, wanted me to start off here. You know, everywhere Jesus went, you know, he started off with this particular passage of Scripture, Luke 4, 18. Let me turn over here. And it's very important that you understand why Jesus the head of the church wants us to know you know he started off here every time he preached and there's a there's a reason for that because he's showing he's showing he's giving us a template on what people how to set people's hearts and minds up it's about expectation when you uh when you realize and you and you receive it in your heart what this passage of scripture is saying to you, I believe you'll be blessed. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you right now for your holy written word. We thank you, Father, that your word is quick. It is alive. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divine and asunder of soul and spirit. It is the discerner of thoughts and the intentions 
of the heart. We thank you, Father, that as your word goes forth, we pray right now that every heart and mind will be open and receptive to your word, that their lives may be changed, redirected, strengthened, and promoted and propelled into the direction which you would have for them to go this day. Father, I pray that you, you use my mind, you use my voice, you use every part of me to convey how urgently you want your people blessed, how urgently you want your people to be established in your word. Because the time is drawing near when Jesus shall come and he will, be, he will take us back. And it is only those who have made the decision to receive Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. It is only those who will be able to be with you for all eternity. And Father, I pray that, that every, every heart on the sound of my voice receives what the church has, what the, what the voice of the Spirit is saying to the church at this hour. And everyone in agreement with that prayer said, Amen. Amen. Uh, first of all, I want to talk to you about your expectation. You know, because it's, you know, because a lot of times we don't know who's going to be preaching, you know. But, you know, I, I love the way Pastor does it because, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're here for the word's sake, it don't matter who's preaching. Amen. Because you're going to expect to hear a word from the Lord and it shouldn't matter who is talking to you because you are trusting the Spirit of God in that person to speak to you and address whatever's going on in your life and help you. Amen? And so, you know, I want you to, I want you to turn, have your expectations high because your expectation is going to pull out of me what you need. You know, because sometimes people don't bring their expectation. You know, or they shut their expectation down. Sometimes people leave their expectation home beside the TV, you know, because they expect to see, you know, the game today. Hey, you know, the Cowboys going to be playing today. <laughs> you know, so, oh, man, I hope, I hope that brother don't preach too long. You know, the game come on in a little while, you know. You know, you know how we are, guys. You know, we want to see the game, you know. And uh, I like I like the game too, but you know when when the Lord step on the scene, man, and He start dealing with hearts and He start blessing, man, you want to leave that? I, I wouldn't do that. I've seen it though. Sometimes people leave their ex sometimes, you know, people's expectation is home beside the the pot roast. <laughs> they thinking, man, that pot roast has been cooking all night. It's gonna be really good. I'm just thinking about that pot roast. Mm. And we season it just right, and I put the onions in it, and I put it on simmer, and it's gonna be really good. And you can just see people's minds turning and stuff, because they're not, they're not hooked up to the message. They're like, oh, pot roast. I love pot roast. Pot roast with potatoes, carrots. It's got that gravy in it, you know, with the pepper. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna put. I think I'm gonna do rolls with the pot roast, and and yes, that's gonna be really good. You know, people just just they just, just gone. They're not even with you in the service. Everybody else is like, Amen. They Amen. Do the pot roast. Amen. Amen. You know. So I want you to have your expectation geared towards the Word of God this morning. Amen. Praise God, because it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Don't have your expectation over at KW. Yeah, they'll be there. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because your expectation is going to determine what you're going to get today. Amen. And I pray that you have your expectation high, and I want you to focus on the Word of God. Now, 20, 23rd of December, you know, you say, well, he must going to be preaching on something have to do with Christmas, right? <coughs> nope. Why? Well, why not? Because I'm not in charge. I didn't, I didn't say, okay, well, I'm going to preach on, you know, Christmas. You know, but then, 
Where do you leave room for the Holy Spirit to lead? Well, it's very important as a minister of the gospel that you be led by the Spirit. Every word that you speak ought to be breathed from God the Father. You ought to be directed by the Holy Ghost at all times. You ought to be yielded to the Spirit of God at all times. So as a minister of the gospel, you know, I am responsible to say what the Lord places on my heart to say. Amen. Preaching ought to be applicable 24-7, 365. You know, it shouldn't be based on the season. It shouldn't be based on whether it's spring or fall, or whether the sun is shining or whether it's raining. It should be blessed on the direction of the Holy Ghost. Amen? You want to know that. This message is designed to deal with the season that you are in personal, not the season or the climate or the weather change. Amen? Now, there are, there are two laws in the earth system right now. You got two laws working in the earth system right now. You got the law of the earth system or the law that Satan has placed in, it has in operation right now. Because you know, when uh, Adam forfeited his dominion authority in the earth realm, you know, Satan became all, uh, the god of this world, the earth system. He's not your God because you've received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So you switched, and now you are part of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. But there are two laws. There's the law of the Spirit of God and of life in Christ Jesus, which has made us free from the law of sin and death. And then you have the law that's working in the earth right now. Now, those two things are going on, and you got two schools of thought in containing those laws. Let's take, let's take something for example. Let's, let's look at homosexuality. You know, a lot of preachers won't take, talk about homosexuality, you know, because they don't want to offend anybody. You know, like, you know, you ought to be able to, you know, just leave that alone. And now they want to make, they want to, they want to put you in jail. You know, they call it a hate crime. If you say, if you preach out of the Bible where it says it's a, an abomination to be a homosexual, you know. But I ain't, I'm not accountable. I, I'm, not, I'm not led by that. I'm led by what's in this, in this Word of God. Amen. So, the earth system says that, you know, we ought to accept every man has the right to sleep with anyone of consenting age, male or female. That's what, that's what the law of this earth system says. God's Word says it isn't an abomination. God says one man, one woman. And they need to be married. Two very contrasting things. Ah, yes. For, uh, Luke 4 and 18. 4 and 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent he, me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. 19th verse, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I believe that the Lord God, the Spirit of God is upon me to deliver a word to you in due season. Amen. And if you receive that as well, you're going to get what you need. Amen. You're going to be fed. Amen. The Bible says as many as are, uh, if you are hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be what? You'll be what? You'll be filled. Amen. So I want you thirsty. God wants you thirsty. Hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Turn with me to Philippians third chapter. Philippians third chapter. We're going to read the first through the ninth verse, and we're going to get as far as we can. With the 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 there's a there's a saying that they that they taught us in Bible school: the short winded shall speak again. So, you know, I don't want to I I, I don't want to wear you out. Amen. Philippians three one through nine. Uh, 
No, I don't want to start there. First Corinthians 8. Let me start over here. First Corinthians 8. First Corinthians 8. We're going we're gonna to look at some scripture today. Amen. I hope that doesn't upset nobody. Because, you know, we, we are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching ministry. Amen. And you don't believe you don't believe anything I say just because you know I'm handsome or whatever. You don't believe anything I say because you know I you know have a doctor's degree or whatever or you know whatever the case may be. You're only accountable to receive what I say if it's out this word. Amen. 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 Then you're then you're responsible for doing it. Amen. Yes. Amen. 1 Corinthians 8. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity, or love, edifies. Or edifies also means builds up. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Sometimes... <clears throat> Sometimes people know just enough to be dangerous, you know. They, they'll, 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 they'll hear part of the truth of what God's Word, but then they won't temper it with other comparable Scripture. You know, the Bible says it this way, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So you can't just take one isolated scripture and say, okay, you know, and try to try to make it doctrine or law or whatever. You got to you got to examine it in the light of other scripture that's saying the same thing. So you want to be careful of those things and you don't want to get puffed up. You know, sometimes people, you know, focus all their energy on uh, regular earthly knowledge and education. Education is great to have, but if you if you don't if you don't apply your education in line with God's word, you'll, it'll, it'll lead you in a totally wrong direction. You know, I, I say it this way, you know, because some people have gotten a hold of what's called the, uh, as, as Dr. Bill coins that phrase, I, I love that phrase, he said they, they've gotten a hold of some of that greasy grace, some of that greasy grace teaching. Which, which says that, you know, uh, you're not responsible for anything. The, the work of Christ, you know, when Jesus came and died, you know, fixed everything. So we're all going to heaven. It don't matter what you do, you know, going, going forward, you know, because Jesus has already fixed it for you. So, you know, you're going to make it in anyway. Because what God has done is fixed it for all mankind, so you don't you don't have any responsibility. Basically, that's what makes that teaching very dangerous. Because the Bible does not teach that, does not teach that. And so we may hit a couple of scriptures that's gonna uh, gonna give you some light on that. You may appear smart to your peers, but many times that person is just smart enough to be dangerous. You know, there's, there's, there's an individual uh, that I know, and uh, I, I, I affectionately call her Marilyn Middle Fingers. And uh, she, you know, this individual, she, uh, she claims to be saved. And, uh, but don't, don't cross her, don't say the wrong thing to her now. Because she will tell you up, cuss you up to one side and down the other. How do I know that? Happened to me. I was like, and this person is 60s plus. And I'm sitting there like, my mouth was dropped, you know. I'm kind of playful. And uh, I said, well, you know where they do a lot of cussing at? <laughs> it's not heaven. <laughs> You can't go to heaven cussing now. You know, you can't you can't be walking the streets of gold and blankety blank, you know, uh uh. You don't even get to see the kingdom. Uh uh. And they, that didn't make him happy when I told him that. I said, you know where <laughs> and of course the reason why I call her Marilyn Middle Fingers is because she decided to show them to me. <laughs> and uh I said, is that your middle finger? I said, I didn't quite see it. And then she showed me the other one. I said, oh, yeah, that is your middle. That's middle. Yeah, your middle finger is all right. Okay. Just checking. Just checking. You know where they do that at? They don't do that in heaven. 
So if you're planning on going, I'm going. You know, I know the Lord. I'm like, I was okay. I said, you better read that Bible again. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have what? Love one for another. That ain't love. You're showing somebody your middle fingers. You're trying to tell them something else. Mm-mm. You cuss them out. You're not, you're not doing that because you love them. You know, blankety blank, blankety blank, I just love you. Well, sometimes they say it like that, but most of the time when you, you know when, the, when somebody telling you something and they looking at you and then they show you their middle finger, you know they ain't saying I love you. I said, really? I just laughed it off. I was like, oh, Lord, help her. My goodness. I said, now look now, you up there in age now, you ain't got time, you ain't got time to be fooling around thinking you do, uh, thinking you're going to get in heaven with that, you know. So I just throw that out there to you. <laughs> I know anybody, nobody in here is like that, you know, so. But you can tell the person on the job that, you know. You know, the preacher, the, the guy was preaching about you the other day. <laughs> you know, I thought about you when he was talking about that, you know, because we know nobody in here does that, amen. Amen, praise God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now some have become full of earthly knowledge. They have, they have what we call, they've crashed their hard drive. You know, if you've seen the movie The Green Mile, when the, uh, when the, when the guard got, got full of the devil and he went crazy, <laughs> they were like, that boy's cheese done slid off his cracker. You know, sometimes you get so full of knowledge, you just, you know, the devils take over, and man, you just, your cheese just slide right off. Your hard drive crash on you. You got a PhD, and you're sitting there drooling on yourself with a white coat on in a white room, playing with your lip. You know, all this worldly knowledge, but it doesn't do you any good unless you got Christ. Amen. You're just sitting there like, you know, Super smart, you know, you know calculus, you know all the advanced maths, you know, you've, you've, you've uh, taught in some of the universities and you got all puffed up and you think, you, you think you're a hot shot and then the devil comes. You ain't got no weapon against you. You don't even know it's a devil. Mm. You need Jesus. Say, I need Jesus. Amen. Some people got a PhD, can't even spell PhD no more. Mm, that's a sad state of that's a sad state of beating. Turn to Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Yeah, we're gonna wrap this up here in just a few minutes. Anybody getting anything? Amen. Lean over, look at your neighbor, say, I'm expecting. Look over at him again, say, are you expecting? Look at him again, say, I'm expecting. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Don't get quiet on me in this Holy Ghost Church, amen? It's okay to say amen, praise the Lord, preach on, glory to God. You know, because remember, you, you are important in this service. Amen. You are very important in this service. Matthew 7. I guess I should get over there. Good. Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there will be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. How many is going to find this narrow way? A few. It didn't say the masses are going to, going to find their way in. Just a few. Let's continue on. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. <coughs> Ye shall know them by their fruit. 
Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. You know, false prophets always have a tendency to attach your breakthrough, your healing, your prosperity to some kind of financial seed. You know, you watch folks on TV, they say, you know, the Lord wants to bless you. The Lord wants to prosper you. The Lord wants to heal you. And if you send me $200, I'm going to send you this anointed thing, and you're going to get it. Well, well, why do I have to send you $200? in order for you to pray for me. Is it because of what this, this scripture just said? False prophets. Just after, after your money. People send their money all the time because they're still on TV. But not anybody here because you're learning the word, amen? You know the word. You know that the, you sow your seed in the local church. You come to church and you sow your tithe and you sow your offering right here. And you are not ignorant of the devil's devices. Because you send your money away, it's going to, it's going to, it's not going to produce what you think. You know, you can't, God's blessings can't be bought like chicken salad at Walmart. Amen. Or buying a ring on QVC. You can't just buy your healing. You know, you're walking through the store. Hmm. Mm, that healing sure is high. Mm. Excuse me. Um, this healing here is, uh, how much is this healing? It's $500. Oh, mm. I can't buy that today. And that's how they treat you on these, you know, in some of these ministries. If you can't send them a nice little knot, you, you, as far as they're concerned, you're, not, you're gonna die. But they're not gonna pray for you. They're not gonna send you no anointed cloth. They're not gonna send you no, no, no oil. This is not oil, but, you know, we're gonna send you this anointed oil, and you're gonna apply it, and God's gonna move in your life for a simple love gift of $500. You are going to get your breakthrough. Don't fall for that. I'm preaching against that. I'm preaching against anything that's not going to promote the Lord Jesus Christ in his fullness. Amen? Amen. But God's blessings can't be bought like that. It's already been done. Jesus already paid the price. There's nothing to be done in terms of paying a cost to receive from God. It is acquired by faith. Amen? And uh, being obedient to God's word. Amen? Praise God. So let's look at some keys to getting your prayers answered. Because, you know, since we addressed, you know, how, how you can't just, you know, sow your seed in some ministry and get a, a cloth and expect to get your breakthrough. Well, let's look at how you do get your breakthrough. Let's look over here at Daniel 10. Daniel 10th chapter, 12th verse. Amen. Is anybody getting anything? Amen. Daniel 10. As soon as I get to it. There we go. Daniel 10 and 12. This is one of the keys. We're talking about keys to answer prayer. Daniel's praying, and he's waiting on God for an answer. And here's the angel talking back to Daniel, letting him know what's going on. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. 
Now I've come to make thee to understand, I'm oh, sorry, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. It wouldn't have just been easy to say twenty-one days. You know, one and twenty days. You're like, what does that mean? One and twenty, one and twenty. Twenty-one days. And I am now I'm come, uh, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. And now I've come to make thee to understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. But let's go back up here to the 12th verse. It says, From the first day that thou saidst thy heart to understand, and to chasten thyself. That's very important. Because not only must you know the word of God, but you got to do it. You got to discipline yourself in such a way that your life is directed around God's word. Amen? Let's look at Matthew. Let's turn back to Matthew 7 again. Let's look at the 21st. This is, this, this is real good. This is real good. It's not necessarily one of those shouting messages, but you'll shout if you get it. Amen? And I believe you're going to get it. Say, I'm going to get it. Amen. I believe it. 21st verse, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many, y'all see that? Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken them unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. The rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, Glory to God. And do of them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So Jesus is explaining here how to have success in your life. Build your house, build your life, build your family, build your work around the Word of God, upon the Word of God. It's a strong, stable, firm foundation. Amen. It will never falter. It will never corrode. It will never be corrupted. It will never disintegrate. Amen. It will stand firm through the storms. Now, the Lord is saying everybody's going to go through a storm. Now, you are going to determine how you're going to fare in that storm depending on how you have built yourself or where you have built yourself. You want to build yourself upon the rock of God's word. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. But let's look here. It says, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom. That, that really dispels a lot of folks, you know, especially the greasy grace crowd. You know, they over there slipping around on that greasy grace, thinking I can do what I want to do. I can do what I want to do. Jesus paid it all, and they slip right over in the hell, sliding around on that greasy grace. Amen. You're going to establish yourself on God's word. Amen. You want to be placed on a firm foundation that's settled, and then you're not slipping and sliding around. Amen. You are planted. Glory to God. Amen. Say, I'm planted. My foundation is firm. I'm building upon a rock. And that rock is God's word. Amen. Praise God. Matthew 5, 5 and 19. Let's turn one page back maybe. Matthew 5 and 19. Whosoever, whosoever therefore shall break one of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Now here's where we are. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. You want to be established? You want to be, you want to be known in the kingdom of heaven? Teach others to follow this word. Amen? That's my charge to each and every person in this, in this house today. 
Tell somebody else about the goodness of the Lord. Encourage them. You see, you see people all the time going through a hard time. You know, and it, 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 it greatly saddened me, you know, the, the events that happened uh, in Connecticut, you know, with the shootings and everything. But, you know, things happen. Crazy people happen, you know. But we don't have to be overtaken by that because we have our God and we have a covenant promise. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. You confess that over your children. You say, no, no devil can overtake me in my household. I plead the blood of Jesus over my children. You are safe. Angels are kept round about you, causing you to have favor and blessing all the days of your life. You want to speak that over your children. You don't want to, you don't want to speak worry and doubt over your children and say, well, I hope they, I hope they have enough security in the school. What security can get around God, the Holy Ghost? What criminal bullet can pierce through the Spirit of God? Not one. Not one. Not one. That's not to say, it's not to say things are going to happen. The Bible says it this way, though. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Glory to God. Psalm 91. You got to know the word. You got to speak the word over your life, over the life of your family, over the life of your children. Amen? Matthew 5, 19b. We just look at that. James 1. 21 and 22. James 1 and 22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. You got to be doers of God's word. Not only must you receive his word, but you got to do it. Amen? I believe it was Smith Wigglesworth that made this statement. He says, faith begins where the will of God is known. You can't have faith until you know what God's word says about it. You can't have, you can't access God's covenant rights unless A, you've been bought with the, you have received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, A, and B, you know what God's word says pertaining a situation, thing that you're believing God for. You can't just say, well, I know the Lord's going to make a way. Well, where is that found at? You got to know God's word. Amen? Brother Keith Moore makes this statement about faith. Here's how you know if you're in faith. Faith rejoices, gives thanks, and is glad. Amen? So if you want to check out whether or not you're in faith, check and see if you you over in that area. Are you rejoicing? Are you giving thanks? Are you glad? Are you or are you crying in your hands? Are you are you on the phone saying, "Child, I don't know how I'm gonna make it. I got this bill, and I got this going on, and the doctor just called me, and what he said wasn't good." Faith rejoices, gives thanks, and is glad. Does that mean you're not going to be faced with some things? <laughs> the Bible says it this way, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. How many things does the Lord deliver you out of? All. I mean, all. Let's define that. All means all. Amen. There's no exclusions in the, in, in the word all. He delivers you out of them all. But you got to know that. You got to know the word concerning your situation. The more scripture you have, the more faith you can have. 
Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10 and 17. You have to have the Word of God. You must ask in faith, not wavering. James says it this way, you know, but let him ask in faith, you know, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and he shall not receive anything of the Lord. Amen? So you want to ask in faith and you want to, third, believe that you receive as according to Mark 11 and 23 and 24. So for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his where? In his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have what? Whatsoever he saith. Amen? That's God's word. You can stand on that. It's a firm foundation. Amen. Amen. Never let you down. Amen. Never, ever let you down. Glory to God. Because I have, I have us in, in essence, you know, called God and said, look, I'm facing this, I'm facing this, and I'm facing this. And it's not looking good. But Lord, you said, yes. if ye abide in me, yes. and my word abide in you, I can ask what I will, and it shall be done. Lord, you said it. You said, so shall my word be, Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. I said, Lord, this is your word. I'm bringing you into remembrance of what you said. Now, I ain't worried about this situation because of what you said. Now, I need for this situation to go another way. And I'm thanking you in advance that it's heading in this other direction. And I know that it can change because it was good. So we know that it can change because it was good and then it went bad. So we know that it can change. So just like it can change from good to bad, it can change from bad to good. Amen? Stand on God's word, amen? I'm challenging you to stand on God's word. Believe that you receive and then give thanks. Just lift up your hands. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you that you always hear me when I pray. You always answer me when I call. You said, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I believe on your name, Lord. I believe on the name of Christ. And I thank you that your word is coming to pass in my life. And you just give thanks. And you just give thanks. You just forgive thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your word cannot come back void. <laughs> you are the God of more than enough. There, there wasn't more than enough till you started it. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Glory to God. I feel my help coming on. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Moving right along. Hallelujah. Let's talk about some hindrances to your faith. Because, see, there are things that can happen. There are things that can happen that you're not aware of, that God may be wanting to deal with you on, that's stopping things from happening the way that you would like for them to happen. So you need to understand that there are hindrances, there are things that can, can be in your life that can cause the blessing to be stalemated. Amen? So let's look at those things. Glory to God. Number one. You may need to go into the city. Well, what do we mean when I say you need to go into the city? We're talking about Paul's uh, Damascus Road experience. You know, he's, he's out there persecuting the church, persecuting Christians. The Lord knocks him off of the donkey and says, look here, you are persecuting me. 
And Paul's like, whoa, 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 what are you talking about, Willis? He said, you are persecuting me. And then he just had an epiphany. Lord, what will you have me to do? Well, he straightened that up quick. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Be quick. Be quick to change. When the Lord deals with you, don't just, well, don't try to get all technical with God. Well, God, you know, don't get technical with God. Man, don't be stupid. What you going to get technical with God for? He knew the beginning from the end. You going to tell him something now? No, 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 that. Be quick to change. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to go in. You may need to go into the city. What does that mean? God may may say to you, you know, um, I need you to address this issue with your your family member. I need you to to go and get that right. You know, there's a passage in the Bible that talks about, you know, when you get ready to give your offering. He said, if you have, if, if anyone have ought against you, he said, don't give your offering. He said, you know, don't give it yet. Go and get that right first. If they have something against you, it didn't, he didn't say if you have something against them. If any have ought against you, go get that right. Then bring your offering. Because you see that song cannot produce because that offense is holding it up. Amen? Did you get that? Okay. Next you want to walk in love at all times. Walk in love at all times. Be quick to walk in love. Don't ever get outside of love when you're dealing with people. And people will give you marvelous opportunities to get out of love. I mean, just driving down the road, people will give you marvelous opportunities to get out of love. What the? Bless them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Get safely to where they need to go, Lord. Oh, my God. Help them, Lord. Help me. <laughs> Help me, Lord. You know how they drive down that road? Folks can cut you off and then flip you off like you were the problem. They're like, I'm like, <laughs> you the one wrong. <laughs> it said yield right there. You yield. <laughs> I got the I got the right away, you know. You know, and people, you know, people crazy. <laughs> they even came out with a term for the craziness on the road. They call it road rage. Man, got so bad, folks carry their guns, shoot at you. You cut them off in traffic. Like, you know, like Wild West. You drive around the road, pow, 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 pow. You know, what? Oh my God. That's why you need Jesus. You need them angels. Yes. Proverbs 16, 7 says, With a man's way, please the Lord, he make even his enemies to be at peace with him. Glory to God. Amen? Let's look here. Hebrews 12, one. Man, I'm, uh, i got more material than I'm going to be able to preach, but it's, it, we, we're not going to hold you. We're not going to hold you. Hebrews. 12, 1. Can I find Hebrews? I can find Hebrews. Wherefore, seeing we also are campus about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let's listen here. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run the race with patience that is set before us. There are certain things that may be going on in your life that not necessarily sin, but it's considered a weight. It's slowing you down. You know, the Bible says, you know, we're to run this race with patience. Do you know, if you put 50 pounds on your bag, you can't run real good. You know, with track shoes on and very minimal clothes, I don't run that great. And I know if I get weighed down 50 more pounds, this is just so not going to happen. It's really not going to happen. So that's what the Word is saying to you. 
spiritually. You may be weighted down with some things going on in your life. Um, you want to stay out of offense. You want to stay out of offense. People will do things and say things, and situations will happen where it will give you a marvelous opportunity to be offended. Ooh, child, where you get your hair done at? Mm, look like a bird just made a nest in your head. You just got it done. Somebody say something like that, and you're like, oh, really? What about that uh, stuff you got going on in your head? <laughs> you know, it's really easy to come back, you know. Well, I'll have you to know. And you just go ahead and, you know, get them told quick. Well, you want to lay that aside. You just want to be able to look at them and say, well, who's your hairdresser? You know, I'm sure that they would do a marvelous job if I went to them, right? And you're looking at their hair and you're like, no, so no, no, so no. No, but we don't want to be sarcastic. You know, that's one of the things the Lord, you know, that's one of those little weights. You know, that's, that's a weight. Sarcasm is a weight. Sarcasm does not really bless people. You know, and that's one of the things, you know, in my personal life, I, the Lord started dealing with me. He said, I want you to stop being sarcastic. So, Hmm. And, 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 and what he said to me about it was, he said, you use your sarcasm like a, a very sharp knife. And you just slice down through people with it at will. Because, see, I can, I, can, I can sense something that you're saying about me, and then I just put a little sarcastic statement on there and let you know what I'm thinking about. And you don't really know if I really mean it that way or if it could be taken differently. So, you know, I got to be very, very sharp with my sarcasm, you know, because when I see somebody doing me wrong, you know, and they're, they're in authority, you know, you just, I, I'm not one of those, you know, like middle fingers Maryland, just cuss you out. I'm not that tight, you know, I'm not, I'm just, not, I don't do that. Um, but I can tell you something and then you, you you're, the wheels in your head are like, what do you mean you said that, you know, so. Lay aside every weight and sin that will get you off following God's word in its fullness. Amen. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So the word cuts both ways. It will, it, will, it will cut this way, and it will cut this way. And so when you are endeavoring to do God's Word, and you're using God's Word, and chopping at the, the, the onslaught of the enemy, but sometimes you may hit yourself. You may get hit with that same sword, that same word. And you know, you're giving a word out, and God speaks a word to you, and you're giving it out to somebody else, and then the Lord says, now I want to deal with you concerning such and such, and you just got cut. He's like, what am I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm bleeding over here. Then I got a bad day. Double-edged sword. The word cuts both ways. And so you have to be willing to be chastened. You have to be willing to be directed. You have to be willing to be instructed. The Bible says, for the, whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, or chastens. Amen? So you have to be willing to receive instruction even as you give it out. Uh, the, more, the more word you know, the more accountable you are to do the word. You don't get to pick and choose what part of the word you're going to do. You don't get to pick and choose. Because, see, sometimes, sometimes, you know, you know, you're sliding around on that greasy grace. You know, you're thinking, you know, well, I don't have to do this because I'm doing this. You know, and God's Word is making you accountable for all of it. Amen. Glory to God. Let's turn over to James 4. And we're just about done. And we, man, my time's so short. Let me get on out of here. All right, praise God. Um, James 4, 3 through 10. 
Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Oh, let's see here now. Mm. Do ye think that the scriptures saith in vain, the spirit that dwelt in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he said, God resisteth the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to, the he to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. <coughs> Excuse me. Praise God. Hindrances. We're talking about hindrances to your prayer life. Let's go ahead and get these last things in, and then we're going we're gonna to close. Eradicate all the influences of Satan out of your life. Eradicate all the influences of Satan in your life. The Lord is going to begin to deal with you about certain things, and you need to be quick to say, Lord, help me with that. Don't, don't, try, to, don't try to get semantics on them and, well, you know, Lord, you know, it's not really what, you know. Mm -mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Stop trying to find loopholes in the Word so you don't have to do it. Be quick to respond to the leading of the Spirit. Sometimes, you know, the Lord will say something to you, and, 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 and there may be an occasion where your very life is dependent upon your ability to hear, receive, and do what God is saying. You know, you're driving in traffic. The Lord says, slow down. Well, I'm going to be late. But if you don't slow down, when you come around this curve, there's going to be a deer there, and you're going to tear your car. But you don't know that. All you heard was, slow down. You got to hear and obey. That's when you get blessed. Jesus told Mary, uh, Jesus told uh, the attendant at the at the marriage dinner. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mary, here's the key to miracles and blessing in your life. When Mary told the attendant at the wedding feast, whatsoever he tell you to do, do it. You do it. That's the key to miracles in your life. Getting your needs met, being blessed all the days of your life. Whatever he tell you to do, do it. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Sometimes that just flies right over people's head. Ah, it's really not that simple. It is. Develop your walk with God. And when he begins to talk to you, you just do it. Pretty simple, eh? Be quick to respond to the leading of the Spirit. Your very life may be dependent upon it one day. Learn to recognize God's voice. Don't be so easy to pass it off as a random thought. Learn to listen for that still, small voice. That still, small voice. That's the leading of the Spirit. And sometimes you can't get to that still, small voice until you spend some time praying in the Spirit. You can't get to that sometimes because you've got so many things going on in your mind. You've got work. You've got children. You got things going on in, you know, civic av a activities and things going on. You know, your relatives calling, talking about mama them and pooking them. And, you know, you got all that stuff rambling around in your head, all these different thoughts. But the way to silence and slow that stuff down so you can hear the voice of the Spirit is spending some time pray praying in the Holy Ghost. As you are obedient to pray and humble yourself, the word of the Lord will begin to instruct you, begin to deal with you, begin to direct you, begin to show you the path 
that will cause blessing and prosperity to overtake you, coming and going. Coming and going. Coming and going. You shall be overtaken with blessing, says the Spirit of God. You have to spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. You have to spend time seeking God's face. And you can sometimes, it, sometimes it, can, it can be as little as five minutes, but sometimes you have to spend some time there. You know, hour, two hours, whatever it takes. Till those voices, those things slow down and stop. You know, it's, it's clamoring in your head and you, you, you want to hear from God, but when you start praying in the spirit, all that stuff starts down, 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 down. And it's like fine tuning your radio. You know, a lot of times and now, you know, when you hit that right dot, you know, you hit hit it right just right. You know, you, we used to have a dial where you just have to tune it, tune it, tune it, tune it. Now you get it's digital, you just go 98.1, and you know, it's right there. But you know, it's not that simple in the spirit. You have to di get dialed in. And okay, now you can hear me. Now you can hear me. He said, that's right, Lord, I hear you very clearly now. And then he just tell you what he need to tell you. And you say, well, thank you, Lord. You just lift up your hand. Oh, thank you. I want to praise you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But it's because you took time to get dialed in. Get dialed in. Get dialed in. Tell your neighbor, get dialed in. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, well, I got, I got so much more, but I'm not going to be able to cover it today. Maybe next time. But did anybody, anybody get anything out of that? Yeah.